Backman's new 94XX pannier tank is finally here. So what do we think? Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Eric and today we're going to have a look at Backman's new for 2021 94XX pannier tank. You can see I've got one here in BR Early Crest Black and that is because this loco, well not this actual number, but this loco ran on Steam on the Met for the 150 year celebrations of the Metropolitan Line. Now as I mentioned it wasn't this number but it was the same livery so I'm going to have to renumber it with some new etched nameplates and do a few little detailing parts as well as uh, a few of my own touches DCC sound wise but it's going to be a really great base model and it'll be something nice to run on Harefield so I'm looking forward to getting stuck in. So let's get out of the box we'll skip all the boring part as always and uh, we'll have a closer look. So here's a nice close-up shot of the side of the pannier really well detailed as you can see with all the pipe work and various bits and bobs Underneath we've even got some of the motion picked out and it's painted in red with the reverser rod So that's a nice thing to have as well as the build plate under here all these little separately fitted parts as well It really is an awesome job and uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. It looked great with some dirt on it though <laughs> Here we've got the front end which gives you a bit more of a view of some of the detailing such as the separately fitted handrails They are very fine. I'm impressed that they managed to do this and make them strong enough to handle We've got the smoke box door with the little handles on there, the shed plate, We've got the very vibrant red on the buffer beams and uh, it's applied very nicely that paint with all the rivet heads exposed also. And let's not forget the most important thing in model railways, oh it's got the old sprung buffers, wow. <laughs> let's have a look at the cab. So looking in the cab reveals some really nice separately picked out detailing. We've got all sorts in there, such as the reversing lever. We've got the regulator all nicely picked out in red. We've even got a couple gauges as well as all the uh, copper pipe work. So they've done a really nice job in there. Obviously you've also got the firebox glow, which you will see when it's on the track and running. And uh, the cab glazing is also separate pieces rather than one long piece of glazing across the entire length. So they've done a nice job with that. Another really nice feature they've added is the copper dome chimney. Now that is a separate item on this model and as you can see it looks really nice and neat and it finishes off the model lovely. Unlike Hornby's efforts where they would just simply paint on some sort of brownie orange colour. Backman have gone the extra mile with that. So as I'm sure you'll all agree, it's looking really nice so far. All that's left now is put it on the track, make sure it actually runs and then if it does what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chassis out take it apart and I'm going to fit a Stay Alive from Trainomatic. I'm going to use one of those because being an ESU decoder fit to this model, the decoders require a three wire Stay Alive to function correctly, which Trainomatic obviously produce. You can obviously use an ESU power pack also, but it's basically the same thing. It's all personal preference. The more basic two wire Stay Alives that you get, such as the Lays options, you can use them on these decoders, but they will give you issues when programming the locos and they just won't work as well. Also, you don't need 30 seconds of run on time with a stay alive. It's just a gimmick and you'll end up crashing through your buffer stops or worse, going off the end of your layout. So yeah, let's have a quick little test and then pull it apart. So we've got the ESU cradle out and that can only mean one thing. I can't wait, let's get it apart. <laughs> As someone that likes to tinker with stuff, this is the first thing that I've been thinking about doing. So we'll take the NEM pockets off. Under there we've got a screw at either end, which should be a cross head. Got a nice magnetic tray there, which does come in handy. 
So those two screws come out and then the chassis comes away from the body, revealing the slightly controversial coreless motor that's fitted. We've also got the Next18 decoder. It is in fact an ESU V5 Micro rather than a Zimo decoder. So obviously being that I use solely ESU decoders, this is very handy because it means I didn't have to buy a non-sound fitted one and fit my own. The only downside to this is if I was fitting my own, I would fit a regular lock sound V5 Micro with the leads attached because I would actually put the decoder alongside the motor in the tank of the loco. This is because I could then use this area for a rather large speaker rather than have to make do with this tiny little thing under here. So that is the factory fitted speaker that you can see and it really doesn't have much in the way of volume and bass as you would probably imagine. But yeah, it's very simple. We've got the little circuit board there for the firebox. If I just zoom in, you can see you've got the two LEDs next to each other, the red and the orange, and it works very well. It's nice and neatly packaged. I'm quite impressed with the size of the cordless motor. I didn't realize they'd be so small. But yeah, it's a very low profile. It does give you a bit of space inside the loco body itself. So obviously we've got the room in there, but as factory, it's fitted with a lot of weight. So this actually weighs a lot. And the advantage to this though, is you can remove these weights. So what I plan to do is remove those and fit a Trainomatic Stay Alive. Now this is their SPP power pack. This is a three wire system, the same as ESU. So it will work perfectly with this ESU decoder. So I don't know if you can see compared to the decoder, they're actually quite a similar size, which makes it very easy to fit in the loco. And as I was saying a minute ago, I tend to take these weights out to fit anything in there. So that's gonna be handy and I'll probably do that. It's quite easy to program as well. A couple CV settings which are on their website. And I think CV113 is to adjust the length of time you want it to be active for. I set that to maximum, which if you're just using the sound and you pick it off, then you'll probably get four or five seconds out of it. If you are driving along, you'll get one or two at a push, which is plenty for any sort of normal track. If you're having any more problems than that, then you've got an issue somewhere else. So we've got a couple of screws here, which we're gonna take out and hope that they're the ones. One at the front, which we've now lost. <laughs> we've got another here and another opposite that. Now there's also another screw at the front. Don't forget that one because you don't want to be snapping the loco. Take that front one out also. As usual, it falls. We'll catch that in the cradle. There it is. And then the chassis should come away from the body somehow. <laughs> Famous last words, eh? So we've got the body and the running plate separated now. So that's quite handy. If I get rid of this, because we don't need it right now, we look inside the body, you can see there we've got some screws and they are, I believe, to hold the weights in. So if we unscrew those, famous last words, eh? There's one, try not to lose the screw. Very tight. I felt something come loose then. And there we are, there's our weight. Trying to make its bid for freedom. So I see there's a little sort of clip in there. We've got to try and get that out somehow. If in doubt, get the pliers out. <laughs> ah, it just needed twisting. There we go, look at that. So you've now got all of that room down the side. If we just put the body shell there, open up one of these Trainomatic Stair Lives. Now this is the smaller version. It's the same uh, control board, but the capacitor is slightly smaller. So you can see that there. I do actually have a bigger one actually, here it is. As you can see, the capacitor is just a lot bigger. If I can, I will probably fit this one, but for now I've got this one to hand. So, I mean, realistically you're not gonna notice much difference. So if we was to, for example, put that in there, you can see that there's so much room in there and that's easily gonna fit. 
obviously a bit of black tack will hold that in there nicely and away you go <laughs> you could even fit two if you're really bored <laughs> don't know if that'd work but hey it's uh, up to you <laughs> but yeah so lots of extra room for activities might try and fit a speaker in there i do have a little rail exclusive speaker here to experiment with but let's get this wired in for now just uh to give it a bit more hope of getting along my very dirty track and then we'll see how it goes so if you want to fit one of these stay lives which will be the same process as the near you one you need to pop the decoder off which obviously being on the next 18 just comes straight away then you need to turn it upside down and you will see if i zoom in three solder pads here now these solder pads are the power pack solder points so you've got the red wire which will be the third one in then you'll have the white wire which will be the middle one and the black wire will be this one on the end here obviously they correspond to these three here so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to solder those on you've got to obviously be very careful because you don't want to put a lot of heat into this and uh, make sure that you don't get any sort of cross feeding through extra solder that shouldn't be there just double check before you put it back in the loco but yeah i'm going to solder those on now i'll leave the wires long just so that we can feed them through we'll put a bit of black tack in the loco to hold the stair alive and that should be good a little bit of solder on the tip there and uh, let's just tin the solder pads One, two, that's three there. Just obviously be a bit careful when you're doing this. Make sure they're on there properly. We've got our wires tinned. So let's go ahead and fit them. We first up got the red. There's that. Then the white. If I can do this, so can you. He says as he drops the wire. There's the white wire. So we've got the red and the white on. Now we've got the black that goes on the end. Blue tack is your friend here. It will help keep the decoder still as you're trying to do this. Otherwise, it'll be wandering off on the table. So we'll just try and get that black one in place. And that should be it there. Just clean my eye and put it back. Hopefully, we've got three soldered stair live wires. Yep, they should do the job. So just for personal preference, I'm just going to give the wires a twist. Try not to twist them too much because you don't want to damage them. But it helps to keep them neat. And that just uh, keeps them together when they're in the loco. And uh, make sure when you've done that, that you haven't accidentally twisted them too much and pulled them off the solder tabs because that's easily done. So now we've got our decoder there with the stair life soldered on. Bring our chassis back. The decoder obviously flips over, sits this way on. There you go, that's the decoder fitted. We've got our stay alive sticking out, which we can then route into the body. We've got plenty of excess on there. So that's gonna be nice and easy. Let's chuck it back together. Now, just as a little extra, something else you can fit if you really want to is one of these rare exclusive maxi tablet speakers. In the same space we now have from the lack of weight, this speaker, obviously you need to solder your wires on before you put it in there. That slots straight in and you can obviously push it up the front and you can just about see it there. And it sits well within the uh, boundaries of where you're gonna need it to. And the stair live will easily fit in there alongside it. You've got plenty of room. So that can just give you a little bit extra volume if needs be. Obviously uh, drill out the funnel on the smoke box and uh, hopefully that might help with the volume because it's not the loudest loco in the world. 
And if you do want to go down that route with the extra speaker, you're also going to have to take into account the connections for it. So you're going to have to go onto the next 18 board and try and solder some wires onto those speaker terminals that come off extra. So this is going to be an 8 ohm speaker that's in here. And uh, these are 8 ohm. So you can run these in parallel. The decoder is plenty powerful enough for that. So that would be the option. So I am... Um, I'm in an R and whether to do it or not. I mean, I've got the speaker here, so what have I got to lose? Let's have a go. I'll probably uh, not film this though. I'll just come back when it's done. So there we are then. We've got the speaker just hidden in here. You can see it there. Bit of black tack on the back of it and the depth of it is just, just before the opening here. We've got the wires running all the way to the back and then they're gonna come to the front again like this. So you can see there's plenty of slack there. Obviously just be careful putting the body back in, that you don't snag any wires. And as I mentioned, I have soldered the speaker wires to the other speaker. And uh, this will do the same thing as if you were to solder them in parallel straight on the decoder. And uh, that should be good to go. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug the decoder back on. I'm gonna have the Stay Alive wire going in the same place and the Stay Alive black tacked in the corner as well. And then throw it back together. So we've now got the bigger stay alive sold onto the decoder. And uh, you can see here, it's mainly just the capacitor that's the difference. Obviously I had to cut the heat shrink off to bend the capacitor back straight again. So what I've done is I've just put a tiny bit of black tape around it. I've left the ends open so that the heat can get out. So that's probably something that's quite important. But yeah, I'm gonna chuck this in now and set it up and hopefully it gives us some improved performance. So we're connected up, the decoder's back in for now until I try and fit lights to it. And uh, let's try and squeeze this back in here without damaging anything, shall we? It should go in there fairly easy. Just gotta try and get those wires to poke up in there like so. And then slowly work that up and in. And there it goes, that's it home. And hopefully it will now work. All we've got to do is obviously put our screws in and then give it a test run. So I'm just quickly uh, doing the settings for the power pack. I'm on Trainer Max website, service and support, and then power pack. You can scroll down to find lock sound V5 and V5 micro. Now this is a Next18 decoder, but the Next18 decoder is a lock sound V5 micro just with a no harness on the end, basically. So these are the settings for the micro. So AUX7 has to be configured as the charge control. This has to be done by programming the following CVs in the described order. So CV 31 to 16, 32 to 0, and then 323 to 31. So that's 31, 32, 323. So if we go, on, I'm on the lock programmer here, on manual CV input, which is there, it's already 16, 32 to 0 already is. CV 323 to 31. So we've got to find number 323. Oddly enough there, you do find a gap on here. So we go up to 320 and then it drops down to 259. But you just keep scrolling until you find it. It was 323, wasn't it? Which we've got there. And we need to set it to 31, which it's already actually set to. So that's uh, done us a favor. And then CV113 is the amount of time that you want the Stay Alive Power Pack to be active. And I'm just going to put that to maximum. 113, it's currently set to 16. I'm going to set that to 255. Make sure you click off it so that it actually changes the binary code. Then if you go to Write Decoder Data, overwrite defaults with current values. Because I basically, I've set this decoder up now and I know that it works other than the power pack. The power pack setting are going to work anyhow, so that's fine. But basically what I've done now, because I've set it to overwrite the default values, if I do CV8 to 8 to reset this decoder at some point, all of my settings will reset to how they are right now as you see them. But anyway, so go back to driver's cab. If I point the camera down, I'm not saying that, we can... Uh, Come down here. There we've got the pannier. If we press go, F1 is currently on. Let me 
put the uh, firebox on to give you a little show. Just give the uh, stair light a couple of seconds just to charge up. And then when I lift one side of the loco off, obviously when you're making the circuits, and then it just relying on the stair light itself. Hopefully it will give us a few seconds. Still going, wow. So that's uh, very good, I'm impressed with that. If I turn the sound off now, it's a bit annoying. We get it going. So it's had a couple of seconds of charge. And I'll just lift it off the track. Look at that. For the size of that stay alive, that's impressive. And that is more than you're ever going to need. If I was to say put it on the track just for just a second, you still get quite a bit out of it. So it shows how quickly it charges up. So I'm impressed with that. That's really going to help with running and uh, also the extra speaker in there is uh, making it a lot louder as well, especially now that I've drilled the funnel. So that's really gonna help. It's very subtle changes that you're not gonna notice obviously by eye, but I know they're there and uh, in person, it makes a big difference. Through the camera, you might not be able to notice the sound difference, but it has helped. But the stay alive is gonna be the biggest one. So let's get it on the layout.
So, there we have it then. Backman's new 94XX. With a stay alive. <laughs> Just for fun. So there we have it then, there's Backman's new 94XX pannier tank with DCC sound fitted running on my layout with a Trainomatic SPP power pack and it seems to run, well, pretty rubbish actually. If I'm honest with you, I'm quite disappointed in the running characteristics of the Loco. The coolest motor just doesn't want to work properly with the ESU back EMF settings. So I'm going to have to go into the lock program software and see if I can tweak some things to get it running a bit smoother. I know I'm not the only one with this issue, so hopefully some sort of fix does come out CV settings wise that people can do on their own locos. So you might have noticed it on a couple running shots, it's quite jerky and it did actually ruin a couple of the shots. I had to retake them four or five times, which did become a bit tedious, but it's a shame because the loco itself is really, really nice. There's so many separately fitted detail parts on this and the cab itself is absolutely incredible and I really like the fireballs flicker. It's just a shame that that motor does seem to be letting it down with the settings. Also, there is a bit of an issue with the sound file. If you hold the whistles on, for example, or leave the drain cocks on, you can hear the sound looping over quite obviously and it's something that does get on your nerves a little bit. Other than that, when it runs, it sounds okay. And if it's not messing about with being jerky and erratic, then it actually looks quite nice going along on the layout. So it's a bit of a hit and miss one really. It's a shame because obviously it's quite a big thing having it running properly and it does let it down. But I'll be interested to see what other people think of it and if they've had similar issues. I know a few of my friends have, but just let me know in the comments down below your thoughts. and. Uh, all I can say now is thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel and I will see you for the next video. See you later.